Hey there, my name is Blue and I'm going to analyze the series The Walking Dead, giving my thoughts on it and just pointing out stuff that you may not have noticed before. Now I want to firstly say that I got this idea from the YouTube channel Overanalyzing Avatar, because I watched his whole series and if you're into Avatar The Last Airbender you should definitely watch his series. This isn't the type of stuff that we usually upload on our channel, but I really wanted to take on this kind of project because I really love The Walking Dead and I just really wanted to share my thoughts on it. So, now that that's out of the way, let's get right into it. Alright, so the first episode is called Days Gone By, and we start off with Rick driving up to a gas station, trying to get some gas. In the timeline, I think this is when he's on his way to Atlanta later on in the episode, as he's then also looking for some gas. Notice how the beginning scenes are very silent? This gives off a very creepy, eerie silence, which gets the viewer right into the atmosphere. So, we're going on a little trip together. So Rick lives in King County, which is a made-up county. It is shown to be roughly in the same area of Georgia as Fayette and Coweta counties, southwest of Atlanta, near the Alabama state line. Just wanted to point out, there is a place here that's called Glen. I just thought that that was pretty neat. So, I found, I think, the actual road that Rick was on in Google Street View. Right here. And, would you look at that? There's an actual gas station there. One thing, though, that is slightly strange is why is he taking this road? Because he was driving on this road, and that would actually mean he's driving away from Atlanta. But I don't really know American highways that well to be making these claims, so I might be wrong. Alright, so everybody that's rewatched the show will have probably picked up on this, but I'm going to point it out anyway. Why does the zombie in the beginning pick up the bear? This is the only zombie, oh, together with one other zombie, that oh, wow. actually does this, picking up stuff. Is she the chosen one? So I guess it's a little stupid that Rick thinks this girl isn't a zombie. He has encountered them numerous times now with the help of Morgan. Like, I get that it makes a cool dramatic reveal, but meh, kinda dumb, Rick. Step up your game. I really like these first lines that Rick says. I'm a policeman. It seems redundant because the audience already knows that based off of his car and clothes, but to have him say it to this little girl shows that he feels that way too. He feels responsible and even after the world has gone to hell and he's looking for his wife and son, he still wants to help people, just as the character of a policeman should be. Also, ever notice that in the intro there's a paper of the Atlanta Telegraph which says, Officer shot with a picture of Rick? That's a pretty cool detail. What's the difference between men and women? That's a joke. No, serious. I never met a woman who knew how to turn off a light. Born thinking the switch only goes one way. On, darling. Maybe you and every other pair of boobs on this planet just figure out that the light switch, see, it goes both ways. Maybe we wouldn't have so much global warming. Nice intro from Shane. You get that he's Rick's close friend and that he's a policeman too, so that's something. But then he starts ranting about women, which makes him kind of sound like a douche. Also, this is the same car as in the beginning, which would make a lot of sense because the police cars are probably assigned to the officers. Leon! You get that ambulance down here, you tell him there's an officer down, you do it now! Fucking Leon! Shh, 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 okay. I'm not here with you, Stephen. Shh, shh, that's it. You hear me? Shh, 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 okay. I'm not here with you, Stephen. So, I really like this bit where you can really tell that Shane does care about Rick. It's important because the struggles that come up later wouldn't feel as important if you thought they never really cared about each other at all. Oh my god, waking up in a hospital like that would be fucking scary as hell. Jesus Christ, this is my nightmare. Alright, so I have a little question here. You can see that there are still lights on in this hallway, even here when the light is freakishly flickering over this corpse. So, that begs the question, where is that power coming from? I guess they could have a backup generator, but to have it working for that long seems kind of weird, because when they head on over to the CDC, that has run out of power, and that's only a few days later. So it would seem weird that some random hospital would have more backup power than the CDC. Also, why then would the lights be working but the machines not, because the machine that Rick was on was definitely off, so it seems just kind of weird. Also, Rick sure is lucky that he doesn't encounter any walkers in this hallway. Also, also, in the last episode, I will come back to this and point out the inconsistencies that this hallway has with the last episode and the flashbacks from Shane. So, when he walks into the staircase, you can see that he's on the fifth floor, right? He walks like maybe three steps and then he's on the second floor where the exit is. Like, I get that it's boring to see him walking down stairs for 50 minutes, but still, the way that this is framed makes it seem like he was just right there when he clearly was not. Also, ever notice that the building changes? <laughs> You ain't slick, The Walking Dead, I see you. 
I've always found this odd. When he got shot, it really looked like he was shot in the shoulder. And then later, it's a little bit more downwards, like under his boob. I don't know though, it just always seemed kind of weird to me. Haha, <laughs> his scream is cut out here for some reason. Alright, so what's up with all these letters? That wouldn't make any sense, right? I'm supposed to believe that after Carl and Lori left, some random postman in the middle of the apocalypse would first write everybody in the city letters, because there would be no letters that he would be receiving, and then delivering them around? Like, what? Morgan! Whoop whoop! It's really nice that Morgan is the one to explain what's happening to Rick in the audience. A really nice way to give information without it feeling like a big info dump. Why are there candles over by the door? That is such a waste! Also, what the hell is this? Walkers don't know how doors work. Is she the chosen one? Hey, same car as before, 134. Leon Bassett. Leon, that's the same guy that saved your life, Rick. Also, nice detail, he has a nameplate. Oh man, you can really see how innocent and human Rick still is here, just like Morgan. Also, it's nice because it brings back that policeman kind of responsibility he feels for everyone in his community. It really shows his character. Emergency channel. We'll be approaching Atlanta on Highway 85. Alright, he says that he's approaching Atlanta on Highway 85, which is really weird because that's way off from where he was before. Ew, that's so gross! Can I borrow some gas? See, right here he's asking for gas, so I feel like the opening scene belongs right before this. So I get that this makes a cool shot, but it doesn't really make that much sense. People still think and thought that Atlanta was safe. You would think that there might be a few cars that drove over here, ran out of gas and continued on foot. Why in the holy hell would all the zombies in the entire universe be camping up in this particular street? Like. Fuck off, series. This doesn't make any sense. And of course, now they're everywhere. Yeah, sure. Also, um, I have this rule. Sweet animals never die. So even though it looks like this horse is being eaten, they're actually all hugging him and not eating. Um, so, so yeah, that's how that works. And the horse lives happily ever after. Hey, you. Yo, Glenn! We love you, buddy! Only problem is that you couldn't have known which frequency this fucking radio would be at. But hey, man! We love you! Alright, so that was the first episode. I hope you enjoyed. I really loved doing this, and I'm probably going to continue making these, even if no one cares. Um, but yeah, if you saw some inconsistencies, let me know, or just generally things that you want to share. Thanks so much for watching, and be sure to like and subscribe, since it really helps our channel. Um, right, so thanks, and see you next time!